Okay, so I watched this year's Google I/O event, and to summarize it shortly, it was mainly about AI, generative AI, Bard, AI, generative AI, Vertex AI, Duet AI, AI, and AI, the responsible of AI, AI, generative AI, personal AI, AI, generative AI. You got it, what I mean. Some people may take it in a funny way, but it's not funny at all. After the success of ChatGPT, all other tech giants, especially Google, wanted to come back and lead the AI race. If you haven't watched my previous video about AI war, go and watch it here. If you are new here, consider subscribing to the channel. It will support my work. Okay, so there were a number of segments in this event, but the main topic of each of the segments was AI. Google already has the ecosystem where they have their cloud platform, mobile operating system, smartphone devices, workspace softwares, and number of smartphone applications like Maps, Photos, Lens, Drive, and so on. To compete with ChatGPT, I believe the focus of Google was mainly on the large language models, and I think they are back and leading the AI race again. What benefited Google is their existing ecosystem. By integrating the experience of large language models in all these services, they have become even more useful for the users. So the event started with CEO Sundar Pichai, where he first shown the demo of Help Me Write, or basically the usage of LLMs in Gmail, where the scenario was your flight is cancelled, airline has sent a voucher, but you want a full refund. You can use Help Me Write by passing a prompt, and the response to the airline company will be auto-written. It will fetch some information from previous emails about flight booking and incorporate it in the email. You can even tell the model to elaborate the response, go through it once, confirm everything, and just send it. Wow! I have used previous AI-based features evolved in Gmail, starting from Smart Reply, Smart Compose, and now Help Me Write. Look how AI has evolved over the period of time and going in which direction. Though there are some existing third-party extensions that exactly work like Help Me Write, this integration of LLMs with Gmail will save us some time and no need to provide your data to these third-party apps. Imagine you could see your whole trip in advance. You can now do it with Immersive View in Google Maps. Whether you are walking, cycling or driving, you can get a bird's eye view of a route. It has information like air quality or weather too, which is a nice experience overall. Apple shown us a similar thing in Fall 2021 event. Making detailed 3D views of the cities is not easy, so initially it is limited to just 15 cities, and I don't think they will be able to roll it out to all other cities ever. I like the next one. It is actually a rebranding of Magic Eraser that was appeared in 2021 Pixel models 6 and 6 Pro. You can of course use all the existing features of Magic Eraser to remove unwanted things from your photos like bags or people behind you which is good. You can also adjust the positions of the objects in your photo this time. But the best part is once you move the object from one place to another, the AI regenerates the missing part in the image like the balloons or the benches in this example. It feels so natural as if it was in the original photo. Again, this is a transition from just finding your photos with text to magic eraser to magic editor. That was the fun part, but what actually powers these apps are the foundational models, which are pre-trained, multitask, based machine learning models that can be further tuned or customized for specific tasks. So far, it was Palm, which stands for Pathway Language Model, and Google announced the second generation of Palm this time, that is Palm 2. It comes in different sizes, Gecko, Otter, Bison, and Unicorn, depending on the usage from lightweight tasks to run on mobile devices to heavy lifting tasks. Trained on 100 plus languages, so understand and generates nuanced results. Currently, Palm 2 is the base model of Google Bard as well. So if you have tried Bard, then you have tried Palm 2 as well. Palm 2 is basically a generalized model that works on multiple domains. But if you want to really leverage it, you should tune it on a specific domain knowledge, like Google did it for medical and security domains. They also announced their next generation foundational model, Gemini, which will be even better than Palm 2. Currently, generative AI is already so advanced that if you see a particular image, you can't say with a confidence that whether that image is real or fake. And here comes the necessity of watermarking and metadata with synthetic images. So basically, if there is any content that is synthetically generated, 
it will allow content creators to associate additional context with the image. As I mentioned, if you have already tried BART, it was so far running on Palm 2 model tuned specifically for conversational purposes. So far, it was lightweight and experimental to get feedback from users. But Google is now launching its full version. So it basically works same as ChatGPT, which can be useful in tasks like code generation, code explanation or debugging. It can write programs in 20 plus programming languages too. Pretty much the same stuff as ChatGPT, but Bard really stands out where they have integrated different services that Google already offers, like Google Search, Knowledge Graph, Google Maps, Google Lens, which give Bard an advantage over ChatGPT. And when there are no existing services, they have partnered with companies like Adobe Firefly, Indeed, Spotify, Khan Academy, and many more. So I believe it is going to be much better than ChatGPT. They are going to offer BARD in 40 languages, which is awesome, but need to check whether it is as good as English. Because I believe there is not as much content as there is in English. Currently BARD runs on Palm 2, but eventually it will be moved to Gemini and it will boost its performance. They have added Help Me Write in the workspace too, where your Google Docs, Sheets or Slides can be intelligent. You can write job description with just few words as a context or organize things with sheets or can even use AI generated images in your slides. Google incorporated LLMs in all other services so how Google search will be omitted from this. So now Google search goes hand in hand with LLMs specifically tuned for generative AI. It also comes with a converse mode so that you can ask back your questions based on the responses generated previously. Pretty much the same idea that Microsoft implemented previously by incorporating ChatGPT with Bing. But the quality of the results is much better with Google search I believe. Need to check this thoroughly. I will make a separate video on Bard vs ChatGPT later. To not miss it, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Next, the focus was shifted to Vertex AI, a service provided by Google specifically tailored towards AI products for building and running your own models. So now Vertex AI will provide the foundational models like Palm 2 to be tuned on your company's dataset so that they will solve your domain specific problems. That's nice actually. But I am interested to know how much control does it give to the companies to tune these models. Personally, I don't like the AutoML part of the Vertex AI, which doesn't give clients much control over models. Okay, so they talked about Project Tailwind, which takes in your documents as inputs and trains or fine tunes an existing model. So that this model can extract information like key concepts, questions out of your documents, which is super useful. It in short creates a synthesized version of the information that you have provided to it. As all these services can be used for good purposes, they can also be used by bad actors, like creating defects. So AI should be used responsibly. Example, they talked about the universal translator service, where during the translation, things like lip matching, intonation are handled, and the translated video feels as real as the original one. Watch this. Students don't realize is that knowing when to ask for help and then following through on using helpful resources is actually a hallmark of becoming a productive adult. Muchos universitarios no comprenden que saber cuándo pedir ayuda y usar recursos útiles es en realidad una clave para convertirse en un adulto productivo. So to avoid the misuse of such services, Google will provide them to only authorized partners, which is a good move, I believe. But Google is not the only company that can build such things. So bad actors can still use similar services offered by other companies. So anyone who is providing AI services, working with AI or creating something with AI will have to use AI with responsibility. Apple announced AirTags last time, which were fully integrated in the Apple's ecosystem. And if you are an Apple user, you can get unknown tracker alerts when an unknown AirTag is moving along with you. But if you are an Android user, that was not possible before. But now the good news for Android users, as it is possible now. Apple and Google have set a new industry standard for that. But I think the industry leaders like Apple or Google should start working on the things like this from the very beginning to avoid the misuse of the products and services. Anyways, better late than never. This time Google taunted Apple for not adopting RCS in their messaging app iMessage, 
I personally feel even though there are multiple operating systems, there must be common communication protocols so that everyone doesn't need to use the same operating system or same type of a phone. I completely agree with Google on this. Android will now have an option to create emoji wallpapers, cinematic wallpapers or generative wallpapers which are really cool features. Then there was a segment for Pixel phone launches in which I wasn't so much interested but they launched three devices. Google Pixel 7a, then Google Pixel tablet and Google Pixel Fold this time. Personally, I am not a fan of Android phones or Android tabs or any sorts of foldables for that matter, but feature wise they are good devices. By the way, they are giving a free speaker dock with Pixel tablet and a free Pixel watch with Pixel Fold. So check out the description of this video to find these products out. This year's I.O. event was dedicated to AI and upcoming many will be too. I'm really interested to know where AI is taking us next. I will catch you in the next. Until then, peace.